On this edition of Grey Matters, we're going to discuss the function and operation of the brain's motor cortex. The motor cortex is a band of the cerebral cortex involved in the planning, control, and execution of voluntary movements. It stretches over the top center of the brain from ear to ear, like you might imagine a madam's hairband, but made of a squishy, grey, noodle-like substance. The motor cortex can be subdivided into five basic parts. The primary motor cortex, which makes up area four, the premotor cortex, the supplementary motor area, the posterior parietal cortex, and the primary somatosensory cortex, all of which make up area six. The primary motor cortex is responsible for generating neural impulses that pass down the spinal cord and control movement. The premotor area is responsible for motor control, including the preparation for movement, the sensory guidance of movement, the spatial guidance of reaching, and the direct control of some proximal and trunk muscles of the body. The supplementary motor area is responsible for internally generating planning of movement and the coordination of the two sides of the body, such as in bimanual coordination. The posterior parietal cortex is responsible for transforming multisensory information into motor commands. The primary somatosensory cortex is considered to be functionally part of the motor control circuitry. Simply put, the motor cortex controls the body's movement, as your context clues may have allowed you to gather. So let us say that we want to make Ben here move his arm. With simple stimulation of the motor cortex thusly, we will see that Ben's arm reacts as desired. But of course, movement isn't quite as simple as all this. Even in performing the simplest movements, your brain doesn't merely send a letter, or to assimilate culturally, a text message directly to the body parts as a command to move. Rather, each movement is actually a series of movements. A motion as simple as lifting your leg may be generated in one part of the motor cortex, but travel through various other parts, including other parts of the brain entirely, before the series of movements that comprises the lifting of your leg is coherently assembled into a command. For this to function properly and smoothly, you need a sort of internal clock to regulate the sequence of movements. This is the responsibility of the cerebellum. Now, if we deactivate the cerebellum, and try to stimulate the same area again, the reaction may not manifest because the cerebellum controls both timing and speed of the movement. Of course, the reaction may also simply be delayed. You see, the motor cortex, as mentioned above, is divided into two larger areas. These are known as area 4 and area 6. The planning for any given movement is collected from various parts of the brain and concentrated into area 6. The cohesive set of instructions is then delivered to area 4, or the primary motor cortex, which then disperses motion commands to the appropriate area of the body according to those instructions. Provided nothing interferes, such as a severed spinal column or ruptured pons, this essential process of the brain performs accurately and efficiently, allowing humans to engage in wonders such as the Russian ballet, team athletics, and auto cannibalism. Join us next time for another exciting episode of Grey Matters. This is Rupert Worcestershire saying good morning.